Let's face it, if you want to do a 3D print as intricate as this, you're going to have to use a resin printer. There's just no way to print all this amazing detail using big, clumsy FDM printers. Also, you would think. See, on my channel, I'm always trying to get the best out of the current crop of FDM printers. But having tested out an M7 Pro from Anycubic recently, now's the perfect time to finally do a head-to-head. -head. Literally. So in the first of what will become a series of face-offs, print battles, bitch fights, I'm going to try and squeeze every millimetre of detail out of an FDM printer to see how close we can get a particular print to admittedly the much higher detailed resin print versions. So let's get down to business and crack on with the Alien Queen head FDM versus SLA face-off. So before we get right into it, I just want to thank my sponsors, but don't switch off, I'm talking about you guys. It's you guys at home that support my channel the most. And the best way you can show this support is to watch as much as this video as you can, because that's the best indicator to YouTube that people like my content. And if you wouldn't mind doing all the other usual stuff as well, that'd be awesome and really help me out. Okay, let's uh, move on, shall we? Oh, and I'm starting of a cold as well, so please bear with me. So I wanted to do this model for a while now, but without having a, a decent resin printer until recently, I was a bit skeptical as to whether FDM could actually print the head, let alone the rest of the body. But that's kind of what sparked the idea, because having been given an M7 Pro by Anycubic, which was very kind of them, I decided to see just how big the difference is between FDM and resin on a complex head such as this. So I set about in my usual way of cutting things up to be a bit more FDM friendly using boxes and booleans in Blender. And if you want to know more detail about how I do that, then check out this video that I'll put up here somewhere. But to cut a long story short, the overall thing I'm trying to do is create large flat areas to sit nicely on the FDM build plate and anything that needs crazy supports to be pointing as vertical as possible. Here you can see all the bits that I've cut up and how I'm positioning the flat bottom that I've made flat to the build plate, trying to make sure that things like the teeth, the horns on the face and the horns on the back of the head are all sort of pointing as vertical as possible. For the resin parts, I just used the parts as they came from Wicked. This was available on their Patreon a while ago, but it's also available on their Gumroad, which I'll put a link in the description for you. Now over to Bamboo Studio, where I printed the FDM parts. I didn't use the Bamboo Studio textured PEI plate. I was actually using the BQ Frostbite build plate, affiliate link in the description. I was using the 0.02 nozzle, fully calibrated as you can see here. I had to change the flow rate a bit to, to 1.0672. I think the key to success on FDM prints is to calibrate properly. So do the flow rate calibration first, read the results, input the value, and do the flow dynamics. But make sure that you select when you do the flow dynamics, the correct profile that you would have just made doing the flow rate calibration. And then make sure that you actually set that on your device settings by going over to the PLA spool and selecting the profile you've just made. Jumping back over to look at the settings proper, the H2D only goes down to 0 0.08 millimeters, where the a1 goes down to 0 06, so I made my own 0 0.06, based quite heavily on the 0 0.08 default. But nothing much changed on the quality screen, apart from the layer height, obviously. So feel free to leave those on the default for the 0 0.08 like I did. The only thing to change on the strength tab was I just put the infill to 5% and made sure that gyroid was the infill pattern, but that was it. Speed didn't touch any of this from the default. Support was where the most changes came in. I obviously enabled support, that'd be foolish not to. I always like tree hybrid, they seem to do a good job. What they do is they're tree supports for most of the time, but if there's any big flat overhangs, they switch to normal supports. Um, I changed the support wall loops to two, which is the most you can put on the, on the bamboo. Um, and I did change the Z top distance to 0.11, which would be right if um, I'd, I'd kept the 0 0.06 layer height. But as you'll see, I'm using adaptive layer heights on each part, which in many places goes down to as low as 0 0.04, which means that 0 0.11 Z distances is way more than the double you should usually set it of point, which in this case would be 0 0.08 for the 0 0.04 layer heights. And therefore, I did get a little bit of stringing, but they printed okay. I did print some copies at 0 0.08, which worked out pretty well, but the supports were a lot harder to remove. So if you're doing something similar, it's a bit trial and error. So do a small piece first and see how it goes and then adjust accordingly. I did turn on independent lay support layers and I did change some of the tree support settings at the bottom, such as the branch distances and width. The only thing changed on others was to disable the prime tower so that the uh, variable support layer heights would work. 
and to put a brim down so it'll help to keep all the things attached to the rubber plate a bit more. And as you can see, it's going to take about one day, 14 hours to print. And that's one of the big downsides of FDM printing is the time it takes to do it because it has to print every single piece individually. Whereas, of course, with rosin, it can expose every single piece on the plate for every layer all at once. So all in all, up till this point, it probably took about an hour and a half to do all the cutting and to do all the changes to the print setup and to get it all ready and sent across to the Bamboo H2D. Now, for the resin printing, it took virtually no time at all to get over into Lychee Slicer, and I decided to try printing it with this sort of orientation for the sort of wings at the back. However, I did find that I was getting a lot of warping, and those two wings were just not fitting together very well at all. I printed about four copies of it in various different orientations, until finally I decided just to make, combine them into one big cowl and print it all in one piece. Now, I know what the experts are thinking. The people who are used to uh, resin printing, they're probably going, I can see exactly what their error is there. But this video isn't made by an expert for experts. It's made by a spare time hobbyist who's just getting back to grips with resin printing. And I have to say that even despite the FDM printer being like a day and a half to print the parts, it was print and done. But with the resin, uh, I think it's a bit more of a steeper learning curve if you're coming at it with the same sort of experience that I am, which is maybe um, quite a few of the people watching. And if that is you, then like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section letting us know what your thoughts are about um, resin and fdm it actually took me a lot longer to get a finished resin printout that i was happy with i'll obviously get better as time goes on but it's part of the real situation a lot of us could find ourselves in and part of that real situation is in the making of this video this is gonna just show me up to be such an idiot i almost didn't include it in the video but hey this is a warts and all as always with me well as i was showing the print settings to um, tell you guys what they were i noticed that the exposure time was 1.8 which suddenly occurred to me that during my calibration video for the m7 i was sure it was 2.1 something or other and sure enough it was and i was like i'm sure i changed that well i did but i changed it in any cubics slicer not in light cheese so in interest of fairness i did do literally as as editing this video i did do a reprint and it was a heck of a lot better so yeah already that would have saved me a good few hours so something already learned for next time and here it is fitted together really rather well and and that's without any kind of cleaning up anyway back to the original pieces so you can just see the struggle i had it serves me right for not getting my settings correct in the first place even after a lot of sanding it wasn't fitting together even half as well as the piece that i've just showed you and the head as well had to have a lot taken off it before it would fit correctly so hey ho after all that and after the fdm having a bit more upfront work on the sdl a longer printing time or a quicker production time after that pitted against a quicker to the printer and quicker printing time for the resin print but due to a bit more of a learning curve for myself anyway there's a lot more time involved in actually getting a print out and done not to mention all the cleaning and prep time of um, the resin prints themselves and the, the mess it makes i'd say we're all about even right about now of course, as alluded to not so long ago, the more expert you are at each discipline and printing method, you might find each one to be an absolute breeze. Or if you're new, you might find them both equally impossible to fathom. So take all this with a big pinch of salt. And just bear in mind the context of this being about my personal sort of experience that could be typical of your general sort of spare time hobbyist such as myself. So once I've done with all the sanding, which um, if I'd actually printed it correctly, wouldn't have been a lot quicker than now, I just filled some of the gaps with a bit of resin as usual. And so on to the FDM print. And you can see the stringing in, in some of the places here, as um, so you'll see on the close-up as well, a little bit here and there, where some of the supports had failed thanks to it being a little bit too large a gap. I hadn't noticed the effect that the... Uh, well, hadn't taken into account i should say the effect that the variable layer height would have um i wish they would have have a setting for variable um support height too which it says they had but clearly doesn't maybe doesn't correlate but anyway everything fitted together really well and the quality and the detail was very surprising so i was pretty hopeful that fdm could sort of punch above its weight a little bit here because let's face it there's a lot of comments and there's a lot of thoughts and there's lots of should we say stigma that fdm cannot and should not be used for fine complicated figurines such as this 
or it could just be perfectly innocent misconception, as I see in the comments on some of the photos that I put online, where people say I could have sworn that was a resin print, not FDM, on the fully FDM prints that I share sometimes. And so fans of FDM printing and people who don't have resin printers, the future is bright and don't be held back and invest in an FDM printing and spending your time doing it. You can get amazing results on all kinds of different figurines that well, even just a couple of years ago, you would never dreamed of even attempting in the past. But even if you don't have a resin printer, a bottle of resin does come in handy from time to time. It is rather excellent at uh, filling little gaps, just using the surface tension to try and get in there. And when you cure it with a UV lamp, it sets straight away. No waiting for things to dry. Just make sure you give it a, a wash afterwards. And here it is um, with all the finishing and stuff done. I didn't give it too much of a careful finish because this is just kind of for experimental purposes only and I want, don't want to spend a great deal of time getting it absolutely perfect but I think the only part that really lets it down uh, but it's still not too bad is the teeth and then here they are side by side each with um, a light coat of primer just normal primer not filler primer not anything like that. I have tended in the past to cover my FDM prints and an entire layer of resin, but for something as detailed as this, it really was killing too much detail. So this has just had a light covering of just standard primer, the same primer that went on the resin version. So the cows are looking really good, very, very similar. Um, it is the teeth and the very, very fine details on the sides that, that is lacking, obviously, in the FDM, but still really good. The resin print from the Anycubic M7 Pro looks absolutely astonishing. Well, that's not to say that the FDM print isn't absolutely great as well in its own right. I mean, obviously, if you hold it up to a perfect print from a resin printer, then yeah, it's not going to look as good. But that doesn't mean it doesn't look good in the first place. It just doesn't look as good. And it's also worth pointing out that that is all with close-up stuff. But you actually compare the two together. I mean, this is a split cut top and bottom, and it's quite hard to tell the difference. So that's the FDM one now, fully. And that's the resin one, fully. But before, when they were split, it was hard to tell them apart, really, from this little distance. So the next thing to look into was how they hold up with a lick of paint. So I start off with um, Hardweather Purple Speed Paint, which is perfect for all the nooks and crannies. And I wanted to go with a dark purple rather than just a black because I wanted to give it a little bit more richness. Because the FDM version had a slight texture to its surface, it looked a little bit duller to the very smooth resin version that obviously the speed paint ran a lot better on it so there was a lot more difference in highlight and shadow going off a couple of reference shots from the great stan winston studios the highlights seem to be a mix of very desaturated blues and orangey uh, colors so sort of like earth tone sort of orange colors so i started off with mixing this quite metallic elven armor blue with um, a dark gray and just use the usual dry brushing technique over pretty much every, every part of each model. I want the skin effect to sort of just feel a little bit broken up and not very precise. It's quite, it needs to be organic. So, you know, too much precision would just look fake. But also because this is a bit more of an experiment, just did the sort of quick sort of slap chop method because I wanted the quality of the texture of the print to do the work and not give a fake impression of more detail by pan painting highlights and shadows. Dry brushing just seemed the very fair an honest way to assess the differences in detail of each model. So after a little bit of a lighter desaturated blue, I moved on to a desaturated orange, which gives it a sort of mid-earthy sort of tone. And I put this on a little bit more sparingly. It's mainly there just to break up the, the, the purples and blue tones and to add a little bit more interest and chaos. And I decided to concentrate the, this colour around the sides of the front of the head and the sort of central bony part of the cowl, just to give a feel that the queen's head is a collection of different main structures that have a slight different look to them. Then the big test was coming up, the, the teeth and the mouth, where obviously the resin has a lot more detail in there. So a mix of a very light, sort of brownie grey. As with the uh, sort of grey blues and grey sort of brownie oranges, I got the colour values for the teeth by sampling those reference images in Photoshop and these are the colours it gave me. Now again, I thought I'd sort of do a sort of reasonably quick job of it to see how easy it'd be to, for someone to just quickly do a, a, a good enough paint job on it and because of the detail of the teeth especially you could just use the side of the brush to just let the again let the detail do the work and it would just pick out each individual teeth tooth very very easily and the smoothness of the teeth just meant that the, the paint flowed on extremely well so i thought well i'll see if i can do the same effect on the uh, fdm print i did try to spend the same amount of time that i spent on the uh, resin print but it was a lot more difficult because the teeth just weren't very smooth at all and it was quite difficult to achieve a tidy look so I did actually spend about double the amount of time if not triple the amount of time on the FDM version to get a passable 
replication of the quality of the quick paint job on the resin. But there's no surprises there, is there? It's just that that's the sort of point at where the difference between detail of FDM versus resin really sort of begins to widen. And if you were sort of locked into just FDM, it would take, you know, more time and more skill and more technique to sort of attempt to use painting to sort of try and bridge the gap and sort of bring out detail and like I mentioned like edge highlighting and shadowing the recesses so a lot more sort of work involved in that but still good results and very much achievable I think I did an okay job here considering it was still quite a, a quick job and I'd sort of rushed through the first pass to try and get it done as quick as I did on the resin but the important point I want to make is that it's still very very much a viable and good looking end result on the FDM print as much as it is on the resin print. And I think you really, really tell the difference if you were to put them side by side. It's like anything in comparison, a normal costing monitor versus a thousands and thousands of pounds worth of monitor. You'll only see the difference if you were to put them side by side. If you were looking at the cheaper uh, monitor on its own, you would think this is a great monitor and you'd be perfectly happy. And I think that is the sort of case here. So I'm sorry, Folks, I'm not going to declare either one a winner because it's all going to come down to your own personal preference and circumstances. For me, for instance, if I was going to do this as an actual fully considered figurine, I would likely do 80% of it in FDM and just use resin for things like the, the teeth and the, the detailed parts at the front. Anyway, in conclusion, the main thing is, can FDM hold a candle to resin on something as detailed as an alien queen head? And the answer is a resounding yes. I think on this particular model, on some larger parts of it, it's almost identical to the resin print. And obviously the more detailed you get, the bigger the gap becomes. But you still get a great print out of it that I dare say most people would be very, very happy with. So as a bonus, here's a quick test I did of the main part of the body and the arms using FDM because they're really quite spindly in it. And I just wanted to see if, if it was going to be possible to the whole model in FDM, which I do actually believe it will be. So I plan to bring that in another video as well as on the complete opposite end of the scale. This is how far I've got on a much larger version of the uh, Queen Head, which obviously this is where FDM really, really shines on doing something as big as this. So a quick thank you to everybody who's stayed this long. Massive thank you to my Patreons who really helped my channel grow. And everybody else can really help by liking, subscribing, and especially commenting. That really helps as well. So yeah, brilliant. Thanks, guys. There's lots of other FDM-based videos on my channel, so head over and take a look. Right, I'll catch you next time.